If you are transporting flammable liquids by road in the UK or mainland Europe, this short film has been produced by the Solvents Industry Association and the European Solvents Industry Group to illustrate the general procedures required to ensure the safe loading, transportation and offloading of solvents. Designed to accompany our existing solvent-related safety films, this film will explain the hazardous properties of the materials being handled, the potential hazards during the loading and offloading of vehicles, and how you can contribute to safe and successful loading. Solvents are transported by road in large volumes. The principal hazard during all loading and offloading operations is the potential to cause fire or even explosion in extreme cases. The process of transferring solvents between storage vessels and vehicles can give rise to the release of flammable vapours and liquids which are hazardous for the following reasons. Vapours, which cannot easily be seen by the naked eye, can combine with air to make flammable vapour clouds. This can be ignited by static discharges and other sources of ignition. Flammable liquids can be ignited, leading to a pool fire. Many solvents are hazardous for personal exposure and for the environment. Vehicle journeys involving hazardous materials fall under ADR regulations, which is the European Agreement Concerning the Carriage of Dangerous Goods by Road. The procedures for discharging or loading bulk solvents are generally the same. Any specific differences will be highlighted in this film. Ideally, prior to arrival, your vehicle will have been booked in with a time slot and drivers will be expected to produce the collection reference number or delivery note, cleaning certificate or product waiver and must have a form of photographic identification and their ADR qualification for carrying solvents. A certificate of analysis or certificate of conformity may also be required for delivery of bulk solvents. Drivers will be shown the on-site safety procedures such as speed limits and personal protective equipment requirements, referred to as PPE. If PPE is required in order to enter the site, then this will be put on at this point, according to site-specific procedures. Typically, drivers will carry their own PPE, consisting of head and eye protection, safety footwear and workwear. Sites may require that drivers undertake an induction of the site rules, involving a safety film or the reading and acceptance of special instructions. Under ADR, there are three recognized languages of communication in the transport of solvents – English, French and German. Even if the local language is not spoken by visiting drivers, it is important that safety messages are communicated and understood. Due to the hazards associated with the presence of solvent vapors and liquids, under no circumstances are sources of ignition permitted. Mobile phones and all other potential sources of ignition must be switched off and either handed in at the designated area or secured inside the vehicle. These include lighters, electronic cigarettes, matches, Bluetooth accessories, tablets, radios and wearable technology. Smoking, including electronic cigarettes, will not be permitted. The vehicle may also be instructed to attend a weighbridge where the current weight is ascertained before proceeding. Weighing may take place at the end user site or at a local certified facility. The driver will be informed of the location of the road stand and may be issued with a site plan. In most cases, site personnel will meet with the driver at the road stand where collection or delivery paperwork is presented to confirm that the product and volume is agreed by both parties. In order to ensure that the correct product is loaded into the correct vehicle or storage tank in the correct quantity, both the driver and site operator confirm that the vehicle connects to the correct product storage tank and that there is sufficient space to receive the volume. When offloading, if security seals are present, these will be scrutinized for evidence of tampering with the product whilst in transit. They can also be cross-referenced with consignment paperwork. There are several ways of preventing overspill of solvent. These include high-level detection systems, dipsticks, metering, tank telemetry and directly by Weybridge. Before transfer can commence, any additional personal protective equipment such as goggles, 
gloves, or anti-static and flame retardant overalls must be worn at this point. It is important that the skin and eyes are covered to ensure protection from solvent splashes. Some solvents are classified as skin irritants and contact with the skin is to be avoided. If solvent does come into contact with the skin, this must be washed thoroughly at the earliest opportunity and wash hands prior to eating, drinking or smoking. Static discharges are a serious hazard wherever flammable solvents are transferred. To prevent static electricity accumulating and causing a spark, transfer rates are predetermined by the site, including relaxation times. Splash filling is avoided by bottom loading wherever possible, and earthing systems are in place to allow static electricity a safe route back to earth. It is, therefore, vitally important that earthing clips and cables are connected before any other operation and transfer commences. It is also important that wheels are chocked, or a brake interlock system is utilized, and that all electrical connections within the vehicle are isolated using the electrical master switch. Connections can be made once site operators are satisfied that all criteria have been met by the product. Connection fittings may differ between tanks and sites, which will have been established during pre-delivery inspection. This will be covered later in the film. The hose is connected to the tank, with the valve remaining closed until final checks are complete. For discharging bulk solvent, the connection point on the receiving tank should be marked with the product name or UN number and is opened by the site operator. Under no circumstances must solvents be discharged using compressed air. In the event of an emergency where the transfer needs to be stopped, drivers and operators must be aware of site emergency procedures. If there is a spillage, report to your site host immediately for advice. All incidents and accidents must be reported to a site employee. Assess the risk of continuing with the transfer when safe adjustments have been made and site personnel have agreed it is safe to proceed. Pedestrian access around the road stand should be restricted and walkways used if available. Ideally, solvents should be bottom-loaded via a meter. However, if top-loading is unavoidable, then splash filling must not occur. In consideration of working at height hierarchy, if access to the top of the vehicle is required, then a safe working gantry must be used if available. Alternatively, a safe system of work must be in place which may include vehicle handrails, a fall arrest system or purpose-designed enclosed portable gantry. Once the vehicle is in position and earthed, the hose can be connected. If tools are required for tightening, then these must be spark-proof. The foot valve and DC valve can now be opened on the road barrel. If a meter is present, the loader must take extra care to ensure the preset volume corresponding to the volume on the collection note is correctly entered into the meter before loading commences. Failure to input the correct volume could result in overfilling the vehicle compartment. When discharging, some facilities may be equipped with a vapor recovery system, which would be connected to the vehicle vent prior to discharge. Monitoring of the transfer process must be in place throughout, checking for leaks and the volume being transferred. Depending on site protocol, the driver or operator must not leave the vehicle unattended at any time, and emergency procedures must be agreed and understood. When discharging, the end of loading will be indicated by a change in the noise of the discharge pump, which is then switched off and valves and vent are closed. When the transfer is complete, connection hoses may be cleared using a nitrogen purge, if available, which returns the contents of the hoses back to the vehicle or tank and avoiding spillages. Alternatively, hoses can be drained into a suitable collection receptacle and then disconnected. If samples are required, these should be taken from the bottom valve if possible or according to agreed site procedures. It is important that no loss of containment of solvent occurs during the sampling process and spillages must be contained and reported. Some sites do not require samples and will issue a certificate analysis or conformity for the customer for bulk deliveries. Samples are transported on the vehicle in an approved sample carrier in accordance with ADR regulations and are not to be carried in the vehicle cab. 
Where applicable for loading, security seals are placed on the vehicle discharge valve and the seal numbers written on the dispatch note. Before leaving site and entering the public highway, all valves and vents are closed, flanges capped, earthing strap disconnected and wheel chocks are removed. The driver will perform a final vehicle check prior to departure, ensuring that everything is disconnected and that the area is clean, tidy and dry. PPE, used for the loading procedure, can now be removed. The driver will collect any relevant paperwork, retrieve any electrical or smoking materials and weigh the vehicle if required prior to departure. At no point during the process and under no circumstances must attempts be made to enter the vehicle's storage compartment to ensure cleanliness or for any other reason. ADR regulations apply to the carriage of solvents and other hazardous substances on the public highway and must be adhered to at all times. These may include tunnel restrictions, road or route restrictions and parking. Vehicle crews must always carry evidence of their ADR qualifications and photographic identification. Roadside checks by enforcement officials can take place at any time, which include inspections of vehicle maintenance and testing and driver hours. Signs indicating the hazards associated with the loaded product are placed on the vehicle. These must be applicable for the duration of the journey to the countries involved. In the UK, these include hazard boards with the emergency action code, UN number, emergency telephone number and hazard class pictograms. Mandatory orange squares are added to the front of the vehicle. International journeys under ADR regulation are placarded with diamonds on each side of the vehicle with front and rear hazard identification number and UN number. Before arranging bulk discharge of any material at an unfamiliar site or storage tank, pre-delivery inspection is essential. This is to ensure that the vehicle being used is suitable for safe access to the site and storage area. Health and safety procedures on site meet the standards required, for example, eye wash stations and firefighting measures. The tank receiving the product is well maintained, is in suitable condition and of the right materials of construction to be compatible with the product being delivered. The vehicle discharge hoses carry the same size connections and that the driver will always, at their own discretion, have the final say as to whether a delivery is safe to proceed. Many suppliers and haulage companies have in-house procedures for pre-delivery inspection. However, the European Chemical Industry Council, CEFIC, has collaborated with other European trade organisations to produce a standard pre-delivery inspection form called the Site Unloading Information Document, SOLID, to assist. Trailers for transporting solvents can be of single or multi-compartmental design, carrying a number of different solvents on the same vehicle. It is vital that the correct solvent is loaded into the correct compartment and is labelled as such with details of the associated hazards. If the vehicle is carrying solvent for a delivery in continental Europe and beyond, it is likely that the trailer will be a single compartment ISO tank. Procedures described in this film also apply to ISO tanks, although additional controls for the connection of hoses at the rear of the vehicle need to be adhered to in order to avoid working at height. Regular vehicle inspections, testing and maintenance need to be carried out in line with ADR regulations. This is also the case for connection hoses, man lids, gaskets and valves. It is important that all seals are compatible with the solvents being carried. Internal cleaning of the tanker barrel is essential to prevent cross-contamination if it is to be used with different types of solvents. History of prior cargoes must be recorded for traceability and cleaning must take place in a certified cleaning station registered with the European Federation of Tank Cleaning Organizations, EFTCO. In summary, make sure the vehicle is earthed and electrically isolated prior to any other operation. Make sure that the site and vehicle emergency procedures are understood. Ensure all connections are removed prior to moving the vehicle when the transfer is completed. Report and clear up all spillages immediately and always comply with the site rules. If possible, do not take samples from the top of the vehicle. Ensure there are no sources of ignition and never smoke on site.
This short film has highlighted that if rules and procedures are fully complied with when loading and offloading vehicles, a safe and successful operation can be completed. The solvents industry is closely regulated and there is information and advice to ensure the risks can be minimized, including our recent films about the safe handling of solvents, static electricity, IBCs and the safe use of gloves. The SIA and ESIG represent the whole of the solvents industry. By building alliances and sponsoring dialogue with industry partners and downstream users, this enables us to promote the sustainable, safe and responsible use of solvents. Thank you for watching this short presentation and if you need more information, please view our comprehensive websites.